tonight, I'm going to take you back to 1979. So first of all, for those of you who weren't born, we didn't have cell phones. Can you imagine? We didn't have internet. We didn't even have computers in our homes. Scientists, they did all their research in labs. Well, some went out to the field. They collected their own data, or maybe their graduate students did. And they brought it back to the lab to analyze it. In 1979, I was a young girl, and my dad came to the family. He said, we're going to go camping. This wasn't unusual. We went camping every summer. But it was unusual because it was February. And it was unusual because there was something about a total solar eclipse. And my parents seemed so excited about it, but I didn't really know what they were so excited about. So we went to Oregon. The eclipse that year started right after sunrise. We were in eastern Oregon in a prairie very similar to this. I remember the grass kind of in the breeze the day of the eclipse. I remember how weird it was that our Subaru was sitting in the middle of the field. I remember the clouds wondering, are we even going to see this thing that we're so excited about? And I remember Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> That's right, because my dad had spent a lot of time making sure that the eclipse song played for those two minutes of totality. <laughs> That's right. Beginning when the moon blocked completely the bright disk of the sun and ending when the sun reappeared. I think some of you experienced that yourselves yesterday. I know I did. In 1979, it did get dark. I didn't get to see the corona, but I did yesterday. That trip made a lasting impression on me. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> And I wonder back then, was that moment when I decided to be a physicist, an astronomer? Was it that moment under that shadow of the moon that ignited my passion for physics? Now let's go to today. So today, we carry around these cell phones, these little computers that can take amazing measurements of our environment. We have a free and open inter internet, at least still, where we, can, um, where we can share ideas and learn from one another. We can collaborate across time zones using online technologies. And this amazing thing has happened where all of those technologies are now used to help scientists understand different things about our world around us. So, that happened yesterday. I'm part of this project, this crowdsourced project. And we've been working on this for six years. These are the some of the volunteers, some of the thousand plus volunteers who signed up to be trained to take photographs of the corona, that outermost atmosphere of the sun, during totality. Those two minutes when the sky went dark, they had set up their cameras, got ready for that moment. Most of them made it, automated it so they could still experience it. And they, they contributed to this amazing project called the Eclipse Mega Movie. So I'm, I'm sure many of you um, are quite aware of what happened yesterday. But just to remind you, uh, essentially the moon's orbit uh, put the moon in between the sun and Earth and cast a shadow on Earth. It's a little tiny shadow. And as Earth rotated and the moon orbited out in space, it cast a shadow that started in Oregon and moved past through Idaho, Wyoming, yay, <laughs> Nebraska. It went through Kansas just a little bit, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Wow. The volunteers, they really wanted to make a map of where they were going to be located. So this is the map they made. The blue pins are where they said they were going to be. That was their planned place of observing. 
the gray pins and the yellow pins were where they might go if the weather turned bad. They wanted us to understand they might not be where they said they were going to be. <laughs> totally fine. So indeed, they all, all these volunteers and our team showed up in the path of totality. Thank you very much <laughs> for being such great hosts. And um, after our amazing experience under that shadow of the moon, these many of these photographers and volunteers found their way to good internet sources and uploaded those images. This was yesterday. And meanwhile, two of our team members sacrificed being part of the total solar eclipse and remained in Mountain View, California, where they prepared to basically take those photographs and put them into the first rendition of a movie to see what the corona would look like from Oregon all the way to South Carolina. So I'm going to show you <laughs> that movie. So as we add more and more photographs together to, to add to this movie and make it more and more rich with this photographic data, it may just be the most boring movie you will ever watch. <laughs> but we will have some of the most amazing images that have never been before taken in this type of environment. So, all of these images, all of the volunteers, and all of those of you who may have already um, uploaded some of your photos, and we're taking photos till September 4th, if you have any you want to share, um, you, everyone is agreeing to share these out under the Creative Commons license. And what that means is that this data set, or all of these varied images of the corona, will be accessible to scientists, and to the public to basically do whatever they want with them. So just like my sister, who was my younger sister, was at that eclipse in 79 with me, she's not so excited about the corona. And you might not be either, but you may have some passion for some other things. For example, maybe you're really interested in extraterrestrials. And if you are, this is the project for you. So this is a um, SETI project, and they, use, they look at radio data to see if ET is trying to talk to us. It's true. You could take photographs of the Aurora Borealis and send them to the Aurorasaurus project. You could go in your backyard and count species or take photos of different insects or plants and provide scientists with information about your local ecosystem. You could play games to map the neurons in your brain. No kidding, super cool. You could help solve the Alzheimer's problem. There's a new project that's now doing that, looking at brain, different brain scans. Whatever your passion is, there's a, probably a science um, experiment out there that's, or a, a question that scientists are asking, and they want your help. You can go to, there are many different portals to find these. This is SciStarter. But there's also um, citizenscience.com and many other portals. Not only am I here today, tonight, to ask you to help us discover new things about our world and our universe, not only am I here tonight to ask you to help us solve some of the world's most challenging problems, but I'm also here to wonder with you about the unexpected consequences of doing something bigger than yourself. Yesterday, how many connections and misunderstandings were bridged by traveling to this, to this path of totality? I wonder how many ways we each thought about how precious our life is on this planet. So tonight, I want to leave you with a Mary Oliver quote and ask you, tell me, what is it you plan to do 
with your one wild and precious life. Thank you.